Welcome everyone to the lecture tonight. We're going to talk about the uh, Olympiad and today was a great day for the US team. US defeated Ukraine two and a half to one and a half thanks to the victory by Fabiano Caruana. Yeah. And Ukraine actually been playing fantastic so far. They defeated Russia and the next round they defeated China. So sort of now they had to, if they had done well against the US team, they played the top three seeds. But uh, the good news is US team won this match in a very close uh, battle, three draws, and Fabiano Caruana won the game. So, and I will show you the game and you'll see now how he managed to do that. In this kind of matchups, it's very important to win one game and just not to lose on the other boards because, you know, it's, that's all what you need, two and a half out of four to win the match. And you get two points. So Ukraine got no points for losing the match, US got two points. So now, India is leading with a perfect score, six out of six, and tomorrow USA was playing with them. So it's going to be very exciting to see how this match is going to unfold. So, but let's take a look at this game, and we'll talk about uh, this match here. E4, C5. Fabiano's uh, opponent is Pavel Elianov, very strong uh, Ukrainian grandmaster, over 2,700, very solid player, and he plays a Sicilian defense. Bishop B5. So Caruana doesn't go for the main lines with d4. He plays for this setup, Rosolimo. The name of this setup is and now g6. Bishop takes c6. B takes c6. Also bishop g7. And now rook e1. Yes? Why b takes c6 and not d takes? Uh, you can also play d takes c6. You know, it, it, it's just he, he wants to play this line. I mean, both moves are playable. One. It just they lead to a different type of positions. Uh, here, Black wants to have more pawns in the center, and he has the pair of the bishops. Knight h6. This is a typical way to develop the knight here, because if you develop the knight on f6, it's going to get hit by e5. So you go knight h6, c3, castles h3. The point of this move is to control the g4 square to prevent a knight or a bishop here from coming here, and of course this will also give the king an important luft for the later on in the game. So it's important to do this. F5 by Eliano. Very concrete move here. When you have two bishops, what do you need to do? Yeah. Open the position. And this way he wants to bring his knight into the game as well. Caruana plays E5. When you have two knights, you want to close the position. Keep it close, right? Knight F7. D3. See... D4 looks natural, but in that case, again, we see some simplifications happening, okay? And position will position will open up as well, okay? So that's why he played the move D3, just to keep the position closed. Rook B8. Why is he playing Rook B8 here? Who can explain me the idea behind this move? Because it looks like he might be able to do something else. But what is the idea, the deep idea behind this move here? Yes? The bishop can't move off of C1. Excellent thinking, yes. He is simply putting pressure on the pawn on B2. And that way now, bishop cannot move from C1. If bishop moves, you simply take the pawn on B2. So he's trying to keep this uh, bishop uh, doing some defensive work. Knight A3. I think it's a good move because now he wants to bring the knight on C4. At some point. Bishop a6. I think black played really well actually. And I think he equalized the game at some point here. After bishop a6. So now this bishop is cutting off this knight. Knight c4. Nothing better than to do here. Just to try to get the knight in. Bishop c4. Black has the advantage of two bishops. But the position is kind of closed here. So he thought this is a good opportunity to simplify the position. Take. Take. And d6. <coughs> he is trying to open the position and get rid of this e5 pawn. Again, Caruana doesn't have time for bishop f4 because of the b2 pawn is hanging. And he opted for this move e6 to keep it close. I think if he takes, he, he probably didn't see any way to get an advantage here. So probably just pawn takes and queen d7, rook e8. Black is just very comfortable. You want to be able to press. 
with white in this kind of matchups you know in the team events you want to get a position where you can press so e5 95 by Elianov takes takes with the knight with the bishop and now bishop h6 activating his bishop putting pressure on the rook bishop g7 came take take now b2 pawn is hanging he could not take on b2 here because he would have dropped the rook so that's why I take take rook b1 i think black is doing more or less fine here this pawn only six it's 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 a, it's a little bit weird it's hard to evaluate whether or not this is actually a strength or a weakness because if we take the queens off the board now black will be much better because this e6 pawn is a clear liability issue but with the queens on the board some potential threats can happen so it's hard to say who is better here i think it's pretty balanced so this queen a5 move creates a little bit weaknesses and now he was attacking the pawn on e6 rook e3 queen a6 now he is attacking the pawn on c4 b3 by caruana queen c8 now attacking the pawn queen e1 very deep move because if you play queen e2 black is going to play a5 anyway and then you don't have any breaks so he anticipates that that after a5 he's going to play a5 his opponent here white only has one plan left in a position because he's dealing with this weakness he's dealing with this weakness actually computers they were showing that's completely equal this position it wouldn't give me any advantage when i start watching the game live around 8 30 a.m in the morning it didn't look that great for us because you know we were slightly worse on a fourth board shankland Koro, korobo shankland we were slightly worse here it looked like equal and hikaru was down a pawn against panamaryov and on a third board wesley didn't have anything it was just completely equal so we were worse on board two and four and this looked kind of balanced so it didn't really look that optimistic i thought probably two two is the best we can get but things happen things happen in this team events and we managed to held the bet positions and squeeze the maximum squeeze the maximum to win the match so ukraine probably was very disappointed because it didn't look like they're gonna lose this match you know they had some advantages on the whiteboards and this didn't look that bad i mean here by looking at the position it looks like white has these weaknesses but Karana made the right decision here he played b4 take take rook b4 and it's 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 the funny thing about this position is black would actually win the pawn but you get a very dangerous pass pawn, I would say. So take, and he just pushes it. It's tricky, you're up a pawn, but you might actually lose because how are you gonna stop this pass pawn from marching down the board? It's outside pass pawn, okay? That's the problem. You don't have a check, queen is doing his job perfectly, guarding everything, and just you just continue pushing it. So this is actually, looks like this might be some serious problems here it's possible to even insert a check and then push maybe this is even more precise okay so elianov went for this position and but he didn't take because of this a pass one so he played rook a8 i believe this is a correct move queen a1 now pinning this rook f4 yeah i think here here basically here he started to a little bit drift you know he, you know maybe there were some other ways he could have played here i think you know but he he played f4 that actually created the weak pawn now rook e4 f3 but now g4 and now white has a very serious threat of g5 attacking the uh, attacking the rook king to g1 king to g8 and now queen goes back on d1 that's f3 pawn became weak what i'm thinking here the best thing for eliana was perhaps to just go king g8 here 
and then threatening to win this pawn. So this way I think he has better chances to hold. F4, rookie 4 G4, now king goes on G8, queen to D1. Now Caruana is trying to win the pawn on F3. Rook takes e6, queen f3, and here it's already clear that white has small but a stable advantage. Why do you think white has a stable advantage here? What are the reasons? Yes? Outside pass pawn, and his king feels a little bit better protected. And now white has to deal, black has to deal with his weaknesses. So he played queen c7, which is fine. I really like the next move here by Caruana here. I think this was a superb move here. What did Caruana play here, okay? That is just superb here. Very nice move here. Because black doesn't have that many weaknesses here. Again, he wants to create that second weakness, right? Second weakness he wants to do. Yes? Absolutely, c5. Bravo! c5. Very powerful move. Now, opening up the position, creating some weak diagonals. And now, if you play d5, the problem is check. Now, simply rook b6 and taking your c6 pawn. And taking it. Okay? If rook a4, he just takes. e7 pawn is very weak here as well. If you play rook c, that's a very passive defense, and that kind of defense not going to succeed. Because then I go a6, accommodated by rook b7, and just wins the game. Don't play passive defense, usually. When opponent has a pass pawn and a file, passive defense not going to work. So very unpleasant position, and they were short on time. But this sequence was played excellently by Caruana. Check. He gave another check. Repeat a little bit to gain some moves and take the pawn. This is already very serious because now, how many weaknesses black has? Two weaknesses, and that's still there, right? Outside pass pawn. So that's very difficult now for black to do anything here. So he proposes the exchange of the queens Exchange of the queens will really benefit black here. So white shouldn't exchange in any circumstances here. So queen c3 check. Queen f6, queen e3. I mean, his position is bad, but I believe his opponent really blundered in some point here. I'll show you what. Rook f8. Rook e4 now. Putting pressure on e7. Rook f7. Rook e5. I really like this move because you cannot play this uh, move because of queen a1 check. So he just simply shuts down the queen and now he is getting ready to pu push his pawn. I believe this maneuver on f7 is uh, dubious because it's not really going to help the advance of this pawn anyway. So I think here he has a better way to defend this position. He must have a way to, you know, it's not easy, but there, there are probably a way for white to defend a little bit better here. Because rook on f7 I didn't like at all. Now here, pass pounds meant to be pushed, yeah? That's what he's doing. Check. King g2. Queen a1. Getting behind the pass pawn. Queen e2. And now we play the move e6. I'm, I'm not sure about this e6 move. Uh, perhaps he could maybe do something else here, but e6 really weakens his position and also, but but he's trying to use a 7 trunk to bring his rook into, yes? Uh, would it be a bad idea for white to capture the e7 pawn instead? When? Uh, so, what does black, what does white play here? Yeah, if you capture here, can I, can you take this guy? That's your most important pawn, your a pawn. If you don't have an immediate win here, it's going to be a draw. 
I mean, you can get this position. Black? You can get Black's? no black's not better, but oh. you can get this position. But that's closer to a draw than a win. Okay. So, yeah, it's really unpleasant this rook on f7. So he played e6. Oh, sorry. That's why he played queen e2. So he can play a6. Pushing the pawn. Further you push the pawn, stronger it gets. Queen d4. I think somewhere here it's already lost. Queen takes, rook takes e6. Now Caruana is up a pawn on top of his uh, outside pass pawn. c5. Rook e7. It's much better to keep the queens on the board here because this pass pawn is further advanced. With the rooks off the board, he can promote this pawn into a queen. So that's why it's better to do that. Rook e7. Check. He calmly goes f3. No more checks. And this is the pass pawn that is going to bring the victory for white. c4. Check. Queen b2 was another way of winning here was very strong as well but I like this check and by the way if he takes with the king white has a superb move queen a2 no checks whatsoever and just simply push push so you have to go away he pushes it you go here check game is over c3 your queen is pinned That's why I go here, so I pin you, so you cannot play c3. So that's why you took queen f7, and now check, centralizing the queen. Check. King goes back. g5 will lose to a move like h4, and queen g5 mates. Check. Push. Pass pawns, meant to be pushed. Last move by Eliano, queen g7, queen b7 trying to defend. And now, the last move here. Who is going to be able to find the last move that forced a resignation? At this moment, all the other games were finished. So, this win brought us the victory. There are probably other ways to win, but this was the best way to finish the game here. He's basically mating his opponent. With just a king, and a queen, and a pawn, he's mating the opponent. Now, yes? H4. H4. And Grandmaster Elianov resigned because of which idea? C3, let's say I go. G5. G5. Can't go back because it's here, so it has to go here. Beautiful checkmate. See? You can even checkmate with the queen and pawns in this position. And if he plays g5, queen f7, checkmate. Excellent, very nice, very nice victory. They interviewed Caruana after this game and he, you know, he mentioned that he's very delighted to win this game and this was definitely his most important victory for the US team so far. I mean, this is his first event for the, and he mentioned that it will be very important to do well in this tournament and try to win the medals and possibly gold so excellent excellent technique here so i want to make sure we remember this technique in the end game okay so i want to leave this position here and make sure you can finish it up from here opening part was more or less balanced here but after a5 i, I think eliano thought you know how could i be worse here i'm pressuring him how could i really be worse here b3 is weak this week but this b4 was a very good resource and uh, so how did he win this? Let's make sure everybody here understand the plan here. That Caruana managed to squeeze and get a win here. What's the move here? Yeah. Takes. Take. Right here, this f4, f3 turned out to be a bad idea because he ended up losing that f pawn. So much better defense is just king g8 back on pinning the pin, okay? I think that probably would have offered him better. It's still slightly worse, but I think it's a better try, okay? So this A pawn is just causing the, the problems here. And that's why uh, he wanted to get some activities. But this turned out to be an inaccuracy. So now what do you do? Hmm? You have to play active. So remember that. 
your rook is being attacked what you're gonna do is to stay active now you want to take the pawn another strong move g4 now threat is g5 he went here yeah this didn't really help black too much because now he's gonna likely lose this pawn and even if he wins this it's gonna be equal material in the other case if he had gone king jade right away then he would have keep the keep his uh he wouldn't lose the f pawn now excellent move rookie six queen takes f3 correct queen c7 and now powerful move c5 i really like the way that Caruana played here he showed that he's picking up his form here there were a couple of shaky moments around before this uh he could have lost some games some game there but this game he played really well he really squeezed the maximum it was a crucial victory for the u.s team because again around two and a half hour mark it didn't look like we're gonna win this match you know what are the Time control is 90 minutes for 40 moves each, half an hour sudden death. So, uh, you know, so it's uh, the start didn't look that great for us. We were, again, slightly worse in some of the matches, and, uh, you know, and this one looked kind of equal. But c5 is strong. Again, if he plays d5, how are we going to proceed here? simply taking the pawn on c6 okay winning some pawns takes check gaining some moves you understand why he repeated the position when you're low on time you repeat the position to reach move 40 okay so that way you can make the time control. You don't want to repeat the position, let's say, if you have a lot of time and your opponent is in time trouble. No. You only do that when you are low on time. Okay? So remember that. Don't just do that because you've seen it do here. You do that so you can uh, gain time. Do we want to exchange queens here? No. If you do that, you're never going to win this game. You're not going to lose, but you're not going to win. Okay? Because the dynamics here is that black king is weaker. Then your king check, queen f6. Again, if again if engine was playing this position for black, he would never lose, you know. But for human, it's difficult to play. I mean, this position is slightly better for white, not that much. I mean, it's better, but again, it, it requires a very very precise play, which is very difficult to do, especially before the time control. Rook f8. Um, didn't quite like this rook f8 idea too much, but uh, it's just it's just very unpleasant, very very unpleasant here uh, to play. But it feels like the rook should stay here to take care of this uh, a5 pawn advance. You know, uh, it's possible that even queen could have stayed there and just king g8 something like this could have been played. I mean, after all, it's equal material, so it's not, uh, it cannot be that terribly bad here. I mean, it's slightly better for white. Maybe King G8 was well better, but really this idea was great. Regrouping, and now Rook E5, neat move to shut down the queen. And now this plan, it also stops the C pawn from advancing. So he goes Queen D6. A5. And A6. Yeah, this is already more or less decisive because E6 pawn is going to fall. And F3. Very good, very good technique. Excellent technique by Caruana to win this. But again, we made some draws here. I want to uh, show you this position also. This is the game. Uh, uh, this is the game Hikaru's game against Ponomaryov. Uh, okay, so let's get this game. So I want to get to the crucial moment here. So 
Hikaru played uh, Benoni defense. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I want to get to the crucial. I don't want to spend. Anyway, this is a fourth line that uh, supposed to be a little bit better for white, but usually black makes a draw. Uh, okay, this is all pretty much theory. Uh, A4, rook E1. Yeah, so here, I started to watch the games like around here, you know, at about two and a half hour mark, and it's clear that, you know, Hikaru is fighting for a draw here down a pawn. I mean, this was a long preparation. I don't know how deep, but... Rook e4 was played. Apparently, rook, e, rook b1 still gives white some advantage. So he played here. And here, I want you to find the way that he played here, because it's quite amazing that he, in a crucial situation like this, he just calmly calculated the complications and went for this line. It looks like he could just lose the game on the spot. If he doesn't play like this, he's going to suffer for a long time and maybe lose. But by playing this way, he just simply neutralized the white uh, white's uh, extra pawn and, and managed to just force the draw. Yes? Queen d1? No. No, not queen d1. King h2. You need the queen on d2 to secure this important c3 and d4 squares. You need to secure those squares. What? No, that's <laughs> yeah, he's suggesting this move, but that's just losing endgame, you know? Push, check. Your rook is on the wrong square, you know? Yeah, this, this end game is you put the rook behind it and that's a win, okay? I mean, then my king comes in and I slowly win this. All right, how did Nakamura force a draw here? Yes. Excellent, bravo. Yes, bravo now. If he takes now, he will simply go check here, take the rook. Again, to do well in this Olympiad, you also have to hold the bad positions. Losing is not an option if you become if you want to become a champion. Two years ago, when China won, they only lost one game. Imagine they played eleven rounds, four boards. You know, so that's like a lot of games they played. They only lost a single game. Van Yu, one of the top board, lost just one game. Other guys didn't lose a single game. So, so far, knock on the wood, we're doing well. We have no losses in six rounds. So that's like a lot of games already played. So US has no losses. Some of the guys are doing really well. Some guys are doing all right. Uh, also, the same thing is for the Indian team. They've got no losses. They're playing exceptionally well. Some of the guys are just doing like winning a lot of games. So we'll talk about that. Let's finish this game. We'll talk about tomorrow's matchups. So check and take that draw. So Panamariov went check, check. I mean, this looks super scary. I mean, King is gonna go on F6. I mean, but somehow there's no way to win the Rook or do anything. So check, he comes back, check. He didn't want to repeat because at this point he realized his teammate is worse. So he went back here, threatening Rook F3, check. Now, what is the key defense here for Nakamura? What is the key defense for him? Yes? Rook, uh, what is that, C5? No, that's a, uh, F. Rook F4, bravo, yes. Bravo, good defense. Stopping Rook F3 check and creating your own threats. Check. King G5, not afraid, not afraid to go there. I mean, it's tricky because there were some checks and things, you know, you have to calculate, but he just calculated all and knew that it didn't work. Again, uh, check. Again, I'm telling you, not too many strong grandmasters would go like this. It's, it's not easy, you know, to do this. He just calculated like a machine, you know, that this all, all this stuff doesn't work, doesn't do anything. It's queen c5 check, rook f5 now. And the game ended here, I think, with a draw, I think queen e3 or something. 
So now king can go back as well. Queen three and and now just make sure you don't blunder g4 here. So just just get back, get back to the safety. So on a board three, Wesley Swell didn't put too much pressure. It was a draw against Grand Master Krivaruchko and Sam Shankland was very slightly worse against Korobov. He held a draw. So two and half and half. Tomorrow we're uh, we're playing India and we kind of know the Indians lineup because their reserve player is this very young guy, strong player, 25, 25, 30 rate player, but he only played two games, the first two matches when they played relatively weak teams. So it's pretty clear they're not going to put him on this matchup. So the US team clearly knows who they're going to face on each board. It's going to be Hare Krishna, top board. Second is Adiban, who's been playing really well. And their third board is playing exceptional. He has five and a half out of six. Sanjay, you know, Gujari, very young guy. And the third, fourth row is Setu Raman. So we, uh, you know, of course, US team is going to go with the top three guys. Karwana block against Hare Krishna. Hopefully he can just block him without too many difficulties. On a board to Hikaru is white. He's going to try to press Adiban. And he has defeated Adiban recently. I think in Gibraltar or something in a very nice game. So he's a big favorite there. And I think US is going to try to put a lot of pressure on that board, on board two against Adiban. On the third board, Wesley is a much stronger player than his opponent, but his opponent is playing really well as a young player. So I think Wesley should just maybe try to neutralize him. And if there are opportunities, go for a win. On the fourth board, we have an advantage. Uh, Seturaman won two games. He's been very solid, but I think... Uh, Either Ray Robson or Sam Shankland, whoever they put on, should try to press and hopefully try to get some kind of advantage. But again, it's very important to play carefully and not to lose any games. Because you lose one game and you don't win any others, that's it. You get no points. It's not a game point, it's a match point, you know. Before, Olympiads, would you get game points? Let's say you win 4-0, you get 4 points. You win... Two and a half, you get two and a half points. The other team gets one and a half points. But this way, if you lose one and a half to two and a half, it's a really bad result because you get zero points. So that's why you really, the margin of error is very small. I mean, US is doing great, uh, but there are still a lot of big teams they need to face. Even if they win tomorrow, it doesn't win. We, we can celebrate the gold yet because we still have to play Russia, who are coming back. After losing to Ukraine, they won two matches in a row. They defeated Germany convincingly today, 3-1. to one. You got China, who won pretty, you know, they won against uh, Argentina, 2 and a half, one and a half. There are some other strong teams uh, still left. Uh, Netherlands, uh, Azerbaijan, possibly. So there's still going to be a lot of strong teams that U.S. will potentially face. But tomorrow is the big test. Currently, U.S. is sitting clear second with 11 points out of 12 and the only team with a perfect score is India and again as I mentioned both teams haven't suffered a single loss in the individual games so tomorrow will basically show you know how you know tomorrow result will be really big today result was very important but tomorrow is even more important because if US beats India they will surpass them they will be clear first and then other teams will be chasing us. So the games will start at 6 a.m. Central Time. So by around two and a half hour mark, uh, you can already see where things stand. Okay. All right. So crucial matchup tomorrow. So make sure you watch and uh, cheer for the U.S. team. Okay. All right. Now time for studies. studies. Excellent. <laughs> Very good. Let's do some good studies, okay? Yes. Very famous. I mean, this is like very, very famous position. White to play and draw. Okay, it doesn't look like everybody know here, so let's give a chance to everybody to know this position. White to play and draw. It looks hopeless, totally hopeless. You cannot stop my pawn. I've got your stop. I, I can stop your pawn. So it looks like I'm going to take this guy. You're not going to stop this one. And I win. Yes? 
Correct. More confidence. Correct. Now, he's going to push. It looks like he's just simply going to push the pawn. Push and win it. Now, it looks like we're just way behind this past pawn and the race is over. Now, continue. Continue playing creatively here. It was a very famous study, actually. Uh, this position is Reti, yes, correct. Wow, very good knowledge. Reti, 1921. Okay, what's the next move? Any ideas? The next move could be here. Yes? King f6. King f6, correct. Now, if I continue pushing my pawn, now you queen. King e7, push, threatening to queen with a check, and boom, you get a queen, so it's a draw. Okay? So when you're king f6, I have to actually play king b6 and secure the pawn, win your pawn, and then push my pass pawn to get the victory. And now this is a special move that is going to give you the draw. This particular move is very important that you find. And that move is... Yes? What's the move? King e5. King e5. Perfect. Now, you're threatening to catch the pass pawn. If he takes your pawn, you catch him. That's it. Draw. So he has to push. If he wants to win, he has to push. And now, what do you do? King d6. King d6. Correct. Now, it's funny. You came here, and now you're going there. H2. Continue. He goes here. <laughs> Perfect. He queens. I queen. And you queen and he check. Win. And you win, okay? Ah, uh, now win. Sorry, it's a draw. That's the idea, okay? So remember that. The only way to win in a hopelessly looking position, you need to come to the center first to try to catch him and then you have to you have to create the threat of promoting your own pawn. So once again you go king here, h4, king f6. It looks like we're losing. He has to go here. Otherwise you go king e7 and promote the pawn. And you just catch it. Okay? All right? That's the way to do it. Otherwise you just if he pushes, king d6 and queen, okay? So remember that idea. Don't, don't resign if you see a similar position that you think, oh, I cannot stop the pass pawn, I should resign. Don't resign. If you have a pass pawn, that means you still have ideas, okay? You still have some ideas to win it, okay? Okay, now let's get one more for you. Why to play and win? Okay, and you have to calculate six moves deep to find the solution, okay? Six moves deep to win this, okay? So, your first move is obvious, right? You're not gonna be able, oh, we have another, we have somebody raising their hand already. Six moves, did you calculate everything? Skewer. Excellent. Looks like she's got it. Let's see the answer. Okay, go ahead. First move. A4. So he's going to use the same method, right? A5. King C3. Uh, uh One mistake, one inaccuracy, and you're not winning this. A6, you don't win. I go here. Draw. 
King G3 she says. And here? Isn't this the same position? It's just reversed? Reversed, yeah? Same exact position as the previous puzzle by Reti. All right, King G1. Brilliant, yes. Threatening to go King F2. So if he goes King D2 now, you just simply go King F2. Perfect. So now he will have to go King D4. Because now he's trying to do this. A6. King E3. King F1. Who say A7? Who say A7? Ay, ay, ay. And now F2, F1. Draw. Block it first. Don't be in hurry. Block it. Okay? Correct. Now, the next idea is if I play the move King C4, why is this losing? A6 ovules. A7. A8, A8 right? A8. A8. And now your queen. And now what is the final idea? Queen A6. Check and winning the queen. Excellent. Okay. You have to know these studies. These king and pawn positions are very, very important, okay? So it's end up with the skewer and shish kebab, or shish kebab tactic, they call it, yeah, sometimes. So that's the idea to remember, okay? So, did everybody here understand the importance of this two different positions? Because here, see, <coughs> this move here, king g1 is a double exclamation mark that you need to find. If you don't find King G1, you're not going to win this. Okay? So you have to find the King G1 move in order to win it. All right? Because otherwise, King G3 will simply result into which position? Position by Reti, right? This is the, this is the position by Reti, yeah? King D4 draws. So, but King G1 wins because... Now, if he goes king d3, king f2, and here again, you simply go king here to stop it first. And here, and which move is important to play here? King f1. King f1, without rushing it, okay? All right, and if he starts with king c4, what do we do? A6. A6. Looks like he's gonna queen it. A7, A7. A8, and checkmate. All right, excellent. Uh, again, yes? The only difference is the king position. Is the switch the exactly, the king position, but that makes a whole lot of difference. In the other one is a draw, this one is a win for white. So, little adjustment makes a big difference. Okay, great. Again, there are five more rounds to go until the end of the Olympiad. Follow this event. It's every two years. It's a very big event. Everybody's playing. Martin Carlson is playing. So, all the best players are there fighting in it so let's see how uh, the u.s team will do okay thanks everybody for coming tonight and see you next time